Hey guys, today we are going to talk about cards that have spiked and have done well. So let's start with Pyramids. I expected this card to plummet into Oblivion, but it's held on to $200. Let me reiterate, this card was a dollar or two, went up to $200 and, net, and has not fallen off yet. There is a very dedicated buyer. This reminds me of Seance. It's the Seance for MTG Finance, except they can actually keep it up because it's on a reserve list. It's from Arabian Nights. It's very old. And just like Seance, I would not, it's not amazing, right? It's just kind of meh. But unlike Seance, it's on a reserve list. And that is the key difference. There's less copies out there and they can't reprint it in a master set. Kind of as a joke. Seance was a terrible, terrible MTG Finance speculation. Pyramids was not. Now, Lake of the Dead, it has spiked and it has held on to $20. In EDH's favorite, if you have a deck in EDH, you probably want this card in it. It's also on a reserve list. I don't see it getting cheaper. It has two good components. A, reserve list. B, it's a land. Being a land on the reserve list means EDH playability in some type of random deck from, as we'll see, City of Shadows. All of these lands on the reserve list, they really have the potential to spike at any time. And all the time. Lands are absolutely necessary in EDH, and the pimper your lands are, or the more old your lands are, even if it's incrementally better. The card will go up a ton in price. There will always be a Gitrog monster or some type of new deck that takes advantage of lands in the graveyard, so that one makes sense. Now, the Shadowmoor cards. As a general, Shadowmoor is a set that has a very limited print run. I'm not sure what happened. Morning Tide, Shadowmoor, that was, I remember playing Magic during that period of time and no one wanted to play. All my friends quit. It was a very good block. The artwork was fantastic. I'm not entirely sure what happened or what actually took, maybe it was War of Warcraft. Maybe it was WoW and more people were doing that. EverQuest, I'm not entirely positive what video games were around at that time, but something happened where people didn't want to play Magic the Gathering anymore. And that created these sets where not many cards were open and therefore people are now like, hmm, hmm, this is good. All right, we need this. So again, Nye Wizard, it's a fairy rogue and it's still going up. Lifeline. So let's talk about Lifeline on the reserve list. Now it has decks that want to play it. There you go. If the card is on the reserve list, even something like Narwhals, there is a set you, there's no more of it. So as soon as a deck hits, and I can tell you for most cards on the reserve list that I believe power level is fine, just wait. Wait for there to be a commander or wait for there to be a new ED8. Uh, it doesn't even have to be a commander. It could be some combo piece. Then the price of this stuff will just skyrocket and it won't come down. And that's what is interesting about these prices. I expected them to come down because normally it would come down. They haven't come down. And I'm, of course I'm talking talking about the ones that have some playability. But as you get older and older to Arabian Nights, I don't see it coming down because the person can continue to buy them out. Intuition. So let's talk about intuition. This is a goodie. It is a good one. Um, and it has had its up, ups and downs, but I believe it's going to trend up from this point on. One of the core, one of the core abilities of blue is instant, instant speed, card draw slash card filtering, and this does it. It is playable in EDHs. It is one of the better tutors in EDHs, in my opinion, because this stuff does go into your graveyard, which you actually might, you might actually want that to happen, and it's instant speed. Fantastic card. Some cards are just meant to go up in price, and this is one of them. I don't think it's going to be much cheaper. A lot of these cards, there is an uptick in the popularity of Magic. Locals, there's more people at Locals now. I feel like we got 
Magic previously, the other with the Gideons and all that, that was not the best for casual players. Yagmar's Whale, also on the reserve list from Urza Saga, also a pseudo vintage card, not bad in vintage. Not bad in. Yeah, I guess it's not bad in vintage, yeah. I, I believe it's banned in Legacy. I, otherwise, I'm not sure why I wouldn't see play in that format. So, great card, not likely to go down anytime soon. If you accept the fact that the reserve list will never go away, then the logical conclusion is to look at the reserve list cards differently from every other card. Even Seance can be reprinted, but even Tamagoyf can be reprinted, and finally its card price is below $80. If you said at Original Modern Masters that Tamagoyf would one day be below $100, people would think that you're crazy, right? Because they are used to Tamagoyf going up in price after the reprints. But to be quite honest, Reserve list cards and old cards. Did you know Savannah Line from Unlimited is $28, $29. And it's not the only card in Unlimited. So remember I said, okay, Alpha, Beta are pretty obvious. Unlimited will be next. Unlimited is happening. Arabian Nights. All these things are very limited. Revise is from Unlimited to Revise. The print jump, the print run jumped Hugely. I'm not entirely sure how much, but the difference between the print runs, Unlimited had a much smaller print run than Revised by a multiplier, I think of five or six, something crazy like that. Maybe more, maybe 10. Because that's where Magic really took off. Magic didn't take off at Unlimited. It took off in Revised. And that's when most of my friends were playing. I had a very small group of friends who were playing Beta and Unlimited. And revised a lot more people were playing and the funny part was there was no mtg finance back in the day otherwise you would make the conclusion wait a second some of these cards in on revised are not are unlimited or not in revised maybe i should buy them like lotuses moxes any of the cards in unlimited that are not in revised have just skyrocketed in price recently now the dark city of shadows i did not know this was a 15 dollar card I assumed it hit the $30 peak and then fell right back to the $2 it used to be at. It is a pricey card and something to keep... Essentially, if you have old bulk of this stuff, you are absolutely good to go. Ideally, your old bulk would be rares. And even more ideally, there would be rares on the reserve list. Then you're good to go. Because all the trash cards back in the day that no one would ever trade for... They're fifteen dollars and ten dollars, if at least five dollars now, and that's what you know. People ask, "How can you make money from Magic Finance now?" You really cannot make mon money from Modern long term, at least. I mean, if you spec and flip it, yeah, but every time you flip it, it's going to lose money. It's going to lose value. There's no long term gainers. The days of putting money into like um, into anything in Modern is over. Everything will be reprinted into oblivion. And that's good. That is good. But if you wanted to make money, that's not good. So if you wanted to make money from magic, it's all in the old cards. There are so many of these old I guarantee you there's so many people sitting on who have hundreds of copies of City of Shadows out there and they have no idea it's a fifteen dollar card. Because there's no way that you grew up playing the dark and understood that's what the card is worth. There's no way that you grew up playing magic and let's say you quit during Zendikar and you knew City of Shadows or is worth that much. You you just couldn't conclude it. It's uncomprehendable. Or even like Lake of the Dead, you kind of knew it was like kind of gimmicky a dollar or two, but to say like it's twenty dollars, like I guarantee you there are old collections out there. And they're, they used to, they were passed over because they didn't have moxes, they didn't have lotuses, they didn't have all of this stuff. But now you don't need all this stuff. You just need a hundred city, city of shadows and you're good. Like, I mean, you're good. You need a hundred Lake of the Dead and you're good. And I get, so I have experience at this level buying these collections from the stores and stuff. They do exist and I don't believe they know what they're sitting on right now. Anyway, bye guys.